Hello and welcome to another video. This time it's another review because the last one went down so well. Actually, it was really, really popular. It's easily the most viewed video on the whole channel. Okay, okay, my last review hardly got looked at at all, but I'm undeterred by this, and this time I'm going to review the John Lewis Internet Radio, so if you're interested in that, please keep watching. So what you're looking at here is, according to their website, the John Lewis and Partners Octave Dab slash Dab Plus slash FM slash Internet Radio with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. But that is a bit of a mouthful. So from here on in, I'll just call it an Internet Radio. Now, for those of you who live outside the UK, John Lewis or John Lewis and Partners, as they're now branded, are a department store, much like Macy's or Bloomingdale's. They do stock well-known high street brands, but they also have their own products, which include electrical goods. I think it's also fair to say that John Lewis has a reputation of being fairly high end in terms of quality and pricing. And so you would expect that design would feature quite highly when releasing their own products. And you can see that this is in fact reflected in the outside case of the Octave. So it's a contemporary design. It's very clean on the front with only the screen in the center, the speakers either side and the headphone jack visible. All the controls are on the top and you also get a remote control. But I think the area that really excels in in terms of the external look at least, is the case itself. So it comes in two colors. There's a dark black ash, and this is the warm walnut. And for a while, I generally did think that this was a solid wood case. It is that good. The grain matches all over, even round the corners. But if you look hard underneath, you can see where the veneer is spliced together. So I guess it's an MDF frame with a wood veneer. And to me, that's fairly acceptable to keep the price reasonable it's still quite heavy and substantial. If we look around the back, we can see at the top, it has a fairly standard telescopic antenna. It has a base port to let out the back wave of the base response. It has a power socket for the 12 volt DC power adapter, which is of course supplied. It's got a three mil input for line in. It has a three mil line out, and it also has a USB type A socket. Now the USB socket is interesting. The instruction book specifically says that it's not meant to charge devices and is only for memory sticks containing music. But I have successfully charged a smartwatch and a Kindle a number of times using this port. The Kindle does sometimes complain that it's not charging, but it genuinely does. So it's definitely not meant to charge the latest iPhone or a tablet. But if you have it as a bedside radio and you need to occasionally charge a low current device like an e-reader, it appears to do that absolutely perfectly well. So finally, if we look underneath, you will see that it has four sturdy rubber feet, one on each corner, and the woofer speaker in the center to enhance the bass response. And the rubber feet keep the bass speaker uh, high enough off the table so that the uh, sound does get out quite well. Right, let's dive straight into the operation of this device. First of all, the input is controlled by the keypad and the rotary dial, or if you want the jog wheel on the top of the machine, or you can use the supplied remote control. In fact, the functionality available on the remote is identical to that on the top of the system, which is unusual because generally you find that the remote functionality is usually limited in some way. Not here, however. In fact, I'd go as far as to say that you get more functionality from the remote because you can recall more stored radio stations at the push of a button on the remote that you can by using the keypad on the top of the radio. So the large TFT screen is a nice addition to the standard LED or backlit LCD display that you may get on some of these devices. But you will see this same type of display on many of these tabletop internet entertainment systems because they all use the same chipset and software from a company called Frontier Smart Technology. And I'll explain more about that later. Now, one thing I do need to mention here is a word of warning if you want to purchase the Octave for a bedroom. The display is bright. In a dark room on the lowest dimmer setting, which incidentally doesn't have an auto dim functionality, then the display will shine out like a torch in the night. So if you're a light sleeper and if you're sensitive to external light, this will be very likely an issue for you. Anyway, other than that, it's a good display. And in standby mode, you'll see the clock in the center. 
you'll see the date at the top, uh, the time of any alarms that are due to be triggered. You can have up to two at any one time. As you can see on this display, there is one set for 5.30 a.m. And you'll also get the Wi-Fi signal strength meter in the bottom right-hand corner. So turning on the device is also pretty easy. It's a quick click on the rotary dial, the jog wheel on the top of the device, or press on the on-off button on the remote. And this will turn the radio on at the last point you were at before switching it off. So if you were listening to an internet radio station, it would start streaming that station again. And that would be the same if you were listening to a DAB station, an FM station, or streaming from a USB stick, a Bluetooth device, or an internal NAS server with a load of MP3s on it. So now I'm going to go through the options that you have. Internet radio is fairly self-explanatory. You choose that for streaming any internet radio station or podcast from the internet. So choose music player if you need to stream any uh, MP3s from a local NAS device uh, available somewhere on your local network, and that can be a DLNA, a universal plug and play device. Or if you want to choose from a USB memory stick full of tunes, you can also play that back from here. So when you're playing back one of these tunes from a, a USB stick or the NAS device on your local network, you will see the artwork in glorious co uh, color, even though it is just the size of a postage stamp. Now this is in fact one of the places where using the jog wheel on top of the device is better than using the remote. If you've got a lot of tracks on there, rotating the wheel is definitely better than pressing the button many, many times. So for DAB, you use this option for any DAB radio station. So for FM, self-explanatory again, choose that for any FM radio station. And you'll see the little RDS symbol that appears for any station using RDS. You'll also see a little icon which is a, like a greater than and a less than arrow pointing towards each other. That defines that the station has got a lock on the channel. Bluetooth will allow you to connect any Bluetooth enabled streaming device, so a mobile phone for instance, if you've got music on there. It will not however let you connect any Bluetooth headphones to the device. It is purely for streaming music and not for listening back. And finally, if you've got a device that you just want to use to play through here as a speaker system, then you use the audio in auxiliary input and you plug it in around the back just using a standard 3.5 millimeter cable. Now you will have noticed that the list of icons on the source page doesn't have an icon for system configuration anywhere. And that's because no matter what submenu you're on, you'll get the context specific menu for that type of sound source. In this instance, I'm on internet radio, so you'll see that I'll have specific options for streaming from the internet, but I'll also you see a main menu option at the bottom of the screen which takes you to a textual list that mirrors the icons you saw before. And also an option for system settings, which will take you to all of the central configuration options. So let's just go through these system settings now. We have an equalizer, which is a standard audio equalizer. It has some presets in here for things like jazz, rock, movies, classic themes, but right at the bottom, it also has an option to set up a profile for your listening preferences. So you can go into bass and you can increase the bass up here and you can go into the treble and you can reduce the treble down there, for instance, and then you can save that option so you can use that as a default for all of the channels going forward. I don't want to save it, so I'm going to choose no. The second option is for network, and this covers all sorts of Wi-Fi network configuration. You can use a wizard to set it up initially, and then all of the other options are for viewing settings that you've already got, or um, choosing a particular region for the Wi-Fi, and any manual settings that you want to do in place of the wizard. Time and date is next, and as you'll probably already gathered, this is for setting the time and date. 
You can also use an auto update, so you can update the time from either a DAB network, an FM network, or from the actual Wi-Fi network. And you can set the format for 12 and 24 hours. Obviously, in the UK, we'll probably use 24 hours. In the US, you'll probably not you want to use military time, as you call it over there, and 12 hour is more suitable. Then you have a language option because obviously as this chipset and software will be used on different machines, some of them will be sold outside of the UK. So you can choose German, French, Norwegian, Polish, all of these languages are available. And finally, you can do a factory reset or you can search for software update. I can check now, but I don't think there'll be any available because I checked recently. And as I suspected, we are all up to date with that. Now this is the John Lewis Octave, but they also have another version called the John Lewis Cello. And the Cello has some enhancements over this device, plus it also has a CD player. So the Cello has a built-in power supply rather than the external power brick that comes with this device. It also has uh, an actual Ethernet connection on the back, so you can use that in preference to Wi-Fi. Also, the input and output connections on the back of the cello are RCA type rather than a 3.5 millimeter jack, as in this device. So having the RCA adapters on the higher model will mean that it's easier to plug into your external amplifier to put in your, your hi-fi setup. So that's a quick whiz through the functionality of the John Lewis Octave Tabletop Entertainment System. But you want to know what it sounds like. Hold on, that's coming next. So to finish off this review, we've come back into one of the rooms of my house. Now, recording the output of this device was always going to be a bit of a challenge. Obviously, I need you to hear a fair representation of the sound coming out of the speakers, because that's how most people will experience the sound from this device. So taking any output directly from the line out or from the headphone socket won't really suffice in this case. Now to try and counteract these problems, I'm using a Zoom H1N recorder on a little tripod positioned as close to the speakers as I dare. So if you hear some distortion on the recording, it will definitely be in correct levels on the recorder itself and not from the John Lewis Octave. I've tested the output volume from the Octave a number of times before making this recording and it can definitely really pack a punch without distortion. So any distortion will be the recorder and not the device itself. So the recordings that you will hear are from internet radio, some classical music, and then a couple of tracks from the YouTube audio library. At various points, I'll change the volume and the equalization to give you a better understanding of the range of sound that will come out of the device. And whenever I do that, I'll put a caption on the screen, although to be fair, you will probably hear the changes. Other than that, I'll leave you with the beautiful tones of the John Lewis Octave. Enjoy. For a way to send financial information more reliably than a vacuum tube and more securely than a telegraph in an easily mistranscribed code. For decades after the Second World War, banks used telex machines, which made efficient use of telegraph lines and allowed users to type a message somewhere and have it printed on the other side of the world. But the need to make sure that the messages were secure and accurate added enormous complexity. Banks hired former military signalmen to operate their telex machines and used tables of cross-referenced codes to check and recheck what was being sent. One veteran recalled the laborious complexities. For every single telex that was sent, you had to manually calculate what this telex test key was. When you received the tested telex, you had to do the reverse calculation to make sure that the telex hadn't been tampered with during transmit and receive cycles. It was incredibly prone to human error. By the globalizing 1970s, the telex system was groaning under the strain, especially in Europe, 
the need for a better solution, one that could work smoothly across borders, was becoming acute. Committees were established, arguments raged, progress was glacial. Then, an American bank started strong-arming everyone into using its own proprietary system, called Marty. This was, as they say in Europe, insupportable. Many banks feared becoming locked in to any standard that was owned by a rival. So they got their act together through a new organisation, SWIFT, the Society for Worldwide Interbank Telecommunication. SWIFT was a private company. Thank you.
Well, I'm back again to thank you for watching the review and perhaps if you're looking for an all-in-one internet radio streaming entertainment platform type of thing, well, you might just consider the John Lewis Octave. Now, before I completely sign off, the more observant amongst you may have realized that I mentioned earlier in the video about the manufacture of the chipset that this and other internet radios use. I said I would come back to it, but I just didn't have time. So look out for another video up here or in the description. And I'll explain more about that in that video. Finally, I once again would like to ask you to click subscribe and press the dingy bell because that's how YouTube works. And I'll see you in the future with another video. Bye for now.